Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. Um, for those of you on the call, if you could go ahead and hit that mute button, that would be really helpful to me. And uh, the rest of you, everybody, everybody on the call, thank you for joining us today. I always love our calls with Miss Veronica. She is absolutely amazing in the way that she can describe products and formulations and it uh, doesn't hurt at all that she is the right hand of Alexandria Brighton, our formulator. So let's get right into it. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that screen. I got that a little out of order. There we go. So let me introduce you to the company Godasana. The essential oils are pristine by their very nature. Nothing added, nothing taken away nothing extracted they are treated with the utmost honor and respect as the gifts from mother nature that they are go to sauna and alexandria brighton are dedicated to sourcing only the best essential oils from organic and wild crafted artesian type farms that span the globe the quality of the oils acquired from these sources is simply not available in the mass production market and many other that many other companies use this is yet another factor that sets go to sauna apart from, I want to say every other brand. Let's just mm -hmm. add that in there. <clears throat> um, I'm going to let Veronica introduce Alexandria since she is oh. basically family to her. So if you wouldn't mind mm -hmm. uh, introducing Alexandria for us, that would be great, Veronica. You bet. So Alexandria Brighton is um been in the aromatherapy industry for a lot of years let's just say that she became she came into aromatherapy through the way of her herbal education with dr christopher she realized that there was so much more that I could you know that she could help other people with besides just herbs so she learned um literally across her kitchen table um, from a French medical doctor who, you know, uses essential oils. She, you know, went to his classes, followed him. And as he was doing treatments and such, she um, has been an incredible formulator and has been sought after by a lot of people and a lot of companies. Her formulations um, are significant and unlike any other. And the reason being is because of the way she intentionally blends oils. Now, there's a certain chemistry, of course, and a, a, a certain scientific method to how to properly blend oils. But Alexandria goes beyond that measure. She goes into what is the intention? What oils truly, not do they just chemistry, you know, chemically work together well, but which ones intentionally work together well? You know, she's looking at the characteristic of each single oil as she blends. She's creating, you know, a method to why, you know, why does she want this blend? What, what is the purpose of this blend? What is it supposed to do? And she, as she's blending, she's actually blending at every, you know, she's addressing every level of our life, our physical body, our emotional body, our spiritual body. So when you hear that body, mind, soul type of, you know, category, this is what these oils do. This is what these oils intentionally, you know, really support the whole person. Alexandria has been pretty, you know, diligent about education and proper education when it comes to essential oils. Mm -hmm. It is really a big factor. She has seen a lot of people and met a lot of people who have, you know, physically harmed themselves due to, you know, the lack of education that they've received or, you know, just what everybody, you know, is just saying, just do this or do that. So she is incredibly mindful about how people properly use oils. So Alexandria has, you know, traveled intensively looking for the proper farms, the proper areas to harvest, you know, good, potent, you know, constitutional um, essential oils. So we're very fortunate. I'm fortunate to have known her for as long as I do. And I'm, you know, really glad that my aromatherapy education came from her. So that's Alexandria Brighton. 
She is, uh, I told you guys, uh, I could not do Alexandra the justice that, uh, that Veronica does. Mm -hmm. um, she is a master purveyor, master formulator, French medical aromatherapist, and that is the go to sauna difference. People may carry essential oils in their company, but we have Alexandria and having that gatekeeper, knowing the nuances, the um, intuitive nuances. She's very intuitive when she's designing her oils and formulating them. So we are super blessed, blessed to have her and actually Veronica too. So Veronica, with that, let's start with, I love, I love Veronica. <laughs> well, before we start with the heart chakra, let's just do a little bit of a review of, um, you know, of what we talked about last month. So we talked about chakras and what are chakras. And so chakras are identified as kind of a spinning wheel. Um, they are attached to certain organs and systems of our body. They also each have emotional and spiritual and mental characteristics to them. What would trigger a chakra not to be in alignment? It could be various things. It could be traumatic events. It could be verbal abuse, physical abuse. You know, it could be just, you know, walking by somebody, you know, maybe somebody, you know, just has that energy or you go into a, or a party or you're going to a gathering of some sort. And, you know, when you walk in the room and you feel like, oh my gosh, that energy is, my energy is just being sucked out of me. Well, this is what can affect your chakras. So when your chakras aren't spinning clockwise and when they're not the correct color, there is an imbalance and a disharmony that happens within your body. So these oils, this specific collection helps put those chakras back into balance, helps put the vitality back into each of your chakras, therefore giving you great, you know, great movement in your body, a healthier, vital body. So this is what, you know, part of what is happening when we work with our chakras. We're looking at just an added piece to extra health and better health, right? Because we're looking at every level of our life in order to have good, harmonious health. So we talked about the eye connect, which is the foot chakras. So it's on both feet. So I remember I told you that if you squeeze your foot in the center and there's a little dimple that happens in the center of your foot, that's, you know, in, in Chinese medicine and with acupuncture and acupressure, that's like the kidney point, but we call it the spring of life. So what will happen is you really need to, We I suggest that you put the oil there because the eye connect is about connecting you to the earth. The eye connect is part of the root chakra system, but it's really about connecting you to the earth. So when you have that root chakra, because in good Chinese medicine, we're always talking about being connected to the earth and to the heaven. So just something to think about. The next chakra was the um, root chakra, the I am. So the I am the is, you know, the root chakra, everyone has a different place. Some places, some people call it the tailbone, but there's a space between our reproductive organs, our genitalia and the anus. There's a little small little patch of skin. That's, you know, which if you go up, it goes into the actual um, root, into the tailbone. So that's the actual place of the root chakra. But for, you know, sensible people, <laughs> for some people, we're going to use the inner thigh. So you want to apply the root chakra in the inner thigh, and that will really help, you know, ground you. The root chakra is about what is, you know, your foundational information. What is the foundation of your sense of security? You know, this is where everybody, you know, when you're little, this is where you're taught how to feel secure. This is where you're taught, you know, how to communicate. This is where you're taught about, you know, just everything in general in life. So sometimes that root chakra, you know, it gets unbalanced. So the I am would actually truly help put that back into balance. If someone feels insecure, 
if someone um, is really fearful, this is a chakra to really pay attention to. <laughs> okay, the next chakra as we move up is in that reproductive organs in that lower part of the belly called the I feel. So that is the um, the place where you're you're supposed to feel things, where you're supposed to have an actual idea of expression of your feelings. This is the place where you really want to, you know, address your feelings. So if you aren't able to express your feelings, then maybe this is the chakra that you want to really, you know, come in tune with. The, um, the I feel is really about, you know, accepting and giving of love or any sort of emotion. This is where we want to feel the sense of joy. This is where we want to feel a sense of happiness. So this is a great chakra to, to work when you're just not feeling it quite, you know, you're not feeling very joyous. So really work on that chakra. And for some women who um, may have, um, Repro you know, PMS or reproductive issue, this is a great chakra to work. This is a great oil to use. I've used this oil with clients who um, sometimes have infertility challenge, you know, along with other things that they were doing. But this is a great oil to really get that reproductive organs going, as well as for men, you know, so it's, you really want to pay attention to your re reproductive organs. The third chakra that we talked about was the solar plex. So the solar plex, I think, is the center of our belly. This is the place where we, we formulate the idea of what we want to do, where we want to come from, where what, you know, the person, I'm a list maker. So for people who make lists, this is where we take action from. This is where we truly, truly, you know, want to take that big movement. This is where we're thinking about it. This is where we want to know, you know, what do I have to do to achieve? What do I need to do to, you know, bring forward whatever it is that I'm trying to, you know, achieve or gain in any way? So this chakra, this is the mover. This is the movement. And as you can tell, it's in the center of the body. So therefore, the solar plexus and the chakras below it, which would be the sacral chakra, the root chakra, and the foot chakra, it's all about movement, right? So it is about moving forward in your life. This is where you're walking from. This is where you're taking on to your path. So now we're going to talk about I love because we're going to the heart chakra. So the heart chakra isn't just, you know, it's the, this is where everything kind of switches in the shark in the line of the chakras. This is where everything kind of takes into a different position. So from the middle of our belly down, we're moving, but now we need to start actually thinking about it and sensing it. So what does the heart chakra do? The heart chakra, the I love. What is it about the I love that's important? The I love is about loving yourself and loving other people. The I love is in the center of your of your of your chest and it really is. It's not just about the function of your heart. It's about every emotion part of it. Are you actually putting out a loving feeling? Are you open to receiving the loving feeling? If you've had grief, if you've, you know, you know, how to break up, you know, any sort of thing, anything, any sort of emotional event in your life that has affected your heart would actually, the I love would actually help there. So we have other great oils that are, you know, would help with grief and such, but sometimes we neglect the idea of our heart. The heart takes on so much at the emotional level. Our heart, you know, when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're depressed, when we're, you know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. How, what do I do? When you're in that place of 
disarray and you're not feeling like, what is your soul's purpose? What is your heart's purpose? What is your heart trying to tell you? So the I love will open up that heart chakra and really allow you to come forward in expressing of love or coming back to, you know, to yourself, because whatever you put out is what's coming back at you. So we want to make sure that we're starting from the place of love and the I love actually does do that. I have seen this heart chakra oil do incredible work with people that, you know, are just on the brink of, you know, not being in a good place. So if we open up that heart chakra, we add that, you know, that I love onto it, then it changes, it changes, you know, your direction, it changes your where you stand from, it just you'll move forward. So the I love is incredible for, for any person who just needs to have more of an idea of what it is to feel love. It's, you know, it's incredibly sad sometimes to know that there are people who have not been supported. So if you had never been supported in your life, maybe you need a little root chakra, you know, stability. Maybe you need a little more I connect with the earth, you know, because that's where you gain that sense of support. But it also deals with the heart. So we talked about the solar plex being in the center of the body, but then the heart is literally the, also the center of the body when it comes to moving upwards towards the heaven. So your heart is connected to every other chakra. At some point, your heart chakra, you need, when you're working at one chakra, you should always kind of work the heart chakra as well. So let's just talk about the root chakra. If you've never felt supported in your life, if you've never felt secure in your life, you can work the root chakra and work the heart chakra because in that sense, have you, if you not felt supported, could you not, you know, not feel the love as well? Could you feel like there's a lack of love? Because sometimes being supported and being encouraged, it's a, it's another way of showing love to another person. So maybe your heart, your heart actually had a hard time and took a hit when you weren't feeling that support. So if you worked your root chakra and your heart chakra, it would work. So we talked about the solar plex being that chakra about taking, you know, the I think, taking action, creating the, what am I gonna do? So what do you want? Is it coming from your heart? The action that you're that's taking place, is it coming from your heart or is it just coming from, I have to, I have to do it this way. So if you work your heart chakra and the solar plex, then you know that your idea is coming from your heart. It's not just coming from, I have to do this. I have to do that. You know, we all have some have tos, you know, we need to get up. We need to, you know, go to work. We need to do whatever in our life, you know, but is it coming from the place of, a, of your heart? Because sometimes the have to doesn't have to be a really bad, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. It can be a place of peace. It can be a place of, I need to do this and I want to do this because if I do, if I do get up and go to work, then I'm able to do, I'm able to go on vacation. I'm able to do this. So it's coming from your heart. So when I work with people in their chakras, I always work the heart chakra because I want people to live from the place of their heart, from the loving from the loving within their heart. So I just want you to take that and you know hold on to it a little bit. So as you're sharing about the, the chakras with people, you're sharing the oils, remember to tell them if they're not gonna buy the whole collection, buy the I love and buy whatever chakra that they need to work on. That's the biggest part. Okay, so we're gonna move up from the heart chakra to the thymus chakra. So thymus is the I serve. It's considered the higher heart because it is an equivalent to the heart. So if you know where your thymus is, it's below your collarbone, kind of in the center of your chest. So the thymus is about service, being of service with your heart, being of service to yourself, being of service to other people with your heart. This is why it's considered the higher heart because it's right above the heart chakra. But it's not, it's, this is not a chakra that a lot of people, you know, identify with. There's, this is not a chakra that a lot of people really take into effect of, you know, that it exists. 
this chakra is truly about being, you know, at that place of service. We need to be of service to ourselves and to other people. So this is kind of like the, the self-care chakra, I think, because you really, you know, it's how you want to take care of yourself. How are you being of service to yourself? How are you being of service? You know, once you take, you know, it's like the whole airplane thing. You got to put the mask on yourself first before you can help somebody else, right? You have to take care of yourself first before you can help somebody else. So the I serve chakra is about taking care of yourself first, being of service to yourself. Therefore, you can be of service with an open heart to other people. So the thymus chakra is above the heart chakra, and it is considered like the higher heart. All right, we're going to move. The next chakra is the, um, the throat chakra. You know, the throat chakra, first of all, let me just say, so it's in the center of your throat. The throat chakra is truly about communication, but it's about a lot of other things. If you in your life have been told, I can't, you know, you need to be quiet. Nobody wants to hear your opinion. You know, um, you're better to be seen and not heard, right? That kind of a thing. If that's something that's ever, you've ever experienced that in your life, your opinion doesn't matter. Um, you, what you have to share doesn't matter because we're just going to do it our way. If your communication has been shut down, at any level, this is where the throat chakra, the I understand comes into play. You want to be able to open your level of communication. You need to be able to express yourself and your feelings. This will also help you to express your feelings in a loving way, right? So if you have not ever communicated or been well received in your communication because people say you're too aggressive, you're too this, maybe you work your heart chakra, right? So you can speak from the place of love and then you work and then you put on the, I understand as well, so that you're always talking in the place of loving. So the throat chakra is really an important piece of how we are expressing ourselves, how we are communicating with other people, how we are communicating with ourselves. <clears throat> so if you are still in a place of, you know, I'm, I don't really love myself. I really don't care. You know, that's, you don't want to talk to yourself like that. You, that's not what you want to do. You want to be able to talk to yourself with a loving heart. You know, they'll say, talk to yourself the way that you would talk to a friend, you know, so would you tell your friend these things? So the, I understand is going to help you. It's going to help you have better communication with yourself and with other people. And it really makes a big difference. You know, it really has an incredible way of change. So a great story is that I was doing a chakra treatment on somebody and it wasn't really that I was doing a chakra treatment on her. It was more about, I have this nasty cough and this throat issue. It would never go away. It just won't go away. So I thought, Okay. So as I was asking to her some questions and I thought I, it came, it came, you know, just intuitively it came up that, you know what, maybe I should put some, I understand on your throat. So as I put her, you know, the, I understand on her throat chakra, it was so interesting how the cough stopped, how her throat opened up. And as the time was going by, and as she was telling me things about her life, she was that person. She was the person of, I'm married to a person who won't allow me to express myself. I have never been allowed to, I've never been allowed to truly, you know, voice what I want to do or what I want in my life. So she had this continuous throat thing. And as the, I understand was getting into that chakra, it was changing and it's changed her to the fact where now she does speak her mind. And regardless of it's good, bad, or indifferent, she is speaking up for herself. 
She doesn't have the throat issue anymore. It always, always, you know, just kind of shut her down. And now the I understand opened that up for her. And it really, truly allowed her to express herself, you know, and to express her feelings. So this throat chakra, it's, you know, each of these chakras are heavy hitters. You know, if there's a constant, you know, if there is a constant something that always happened in your life, it just stays with you. And it takes some time and work to get to kind of move through that. So one of the best things to do is to really look into your chakras and to really get that shift. So if you really want to truly, you know, take, you know, move things in your life and, you know, I'm ready for a change, do some, you know, apply these chakra oils. You'll be so surprised at what kind of change would actually occur within your life. And this throat chakra, it is unbelievable, you know, the things that happen. And the many times that I've done this, you know, Alexandra's chakra treatment to people, it has really intensified, you know, the, this throat chakra. It is really a big, big chakra. You know, you would think the heart chakra, or, you know, is really important, but this throat chakra is is really a big chakra to really work with because you need to be able to talk. You need to be able to communicate and it works incredibly well to really help open that next level for a person. It really, truly does. Okay. So the next oil, the next blend is I perceive, and we're talking about, I perceive in the third eye. So the third eye is in the middle of the forehead and I perceive some people, when you ask them, what do you want to do? You know, what do you want? I don't know. You know, what, what is it that you, what's your goal? I don't know. How do you see yourself, you know, later on in your life? I don't know. I perceive the, I think the third, I mean, I perceive the, um, the third eye. This is what helps you see that. This is what helps you perceive beyond. This is what helps you say, okay, this is the goal I want to attain. And this is what it's going to look like. So I have done um, numerous little self-help personal growth programs. And what is interesting is when you really try to manifest, you should already, you should manifest as if it's already done. You should be able to already see it. So let's just, that's being very materialistic about this, right? Let's say, I want a car. Well, what, what kind of car do you want? I don't know. I just need a car. Well, what does it look like? I don't know. I perceive this is going to help you open it up so you can actually see the car that you want. I want a, I don't, I'm not a car person, so I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, I, let's just say Mercedes. I want a Mercedes. Well, what color is it? I don't know. Well, you got to know. You need to know exactly what it looks like. You need to know exactly the color. What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What is it when you sit in there, you'll know exactly what it is. But some people are challenged in seeing that. They can't see beyond what's just in front of them. How do you move forward? How do you have the perception of what, is going to be better in your life if you can't see what the better is in your life. So I perceive is about seeing beyond. This is not a um, crystal ball type thing. This is not, you know, this is about in within yourself, having the ability to visualize what it is that you want to attain. I want better health. Okay. But what does that look like? What is better health to you and how do you see it? So a drop and you want to be very, let me just, let's talk about this real quick. You want to be very careful when you apply, you know, the oil there because it will drip, you know? So what I do is just so happen to have a bottle of something you get on the top of the orifice reducer. There's always some residue on the top of the orifice reducer that you can just get a little bit of a, a schmear. And then you can apply the oil, you know, there on the, the third eye. 
And that's what's going to help you move forward. And that's what's going to help you actually open yourself up to see what it is that you want, to see the finest details of your goals, of your intentions, because that's what you need to do. You cannot try to achieve something if you don't know what it looks like. I want to make, you know, $15,000 a month. Okay. So what does that look like? What is $15,000? look? Like? Do you see $15,000 in your bank account every month? You know, is it going to be, you know, a total of $15,000 in the month? Like, is it all going to be deposited once? Is it going to be deposited every single week, every other week, every day? So all you do is apply a little bit of that on that third eye. You want to be able to see. You've got to get to the fine details. And I perceive gets you to that place. I perceive lets you get to the fine details. So as you're creating your intention, use the chakra oils to really enheighten and to level you up to where you are trying to go to, what you want to truly do. So I perceive is there. And sometimes if, if you are a meditating person, if you are, you know, are a person who sits in prayer and such, this is a great oil to use because then maybe the vision, the answer will come in that time. So something to just think about. So I perceive just a little dab will do you. It's always good. And really allow yourself that opportunity to move forward and to see what it is that you want to see and be able to really, you know, grasp and understand what happens. You know, you want to, you got to visualize it and you got to see it and you got to do it for a long period of time. You can't do it just once and think that it's all done. You got to keep moving forward. All right. So I imagine the crown chakra. So the crown chakra, if you follow the top of your ears to the top of your head, there's the crown chakra right there. And the crown chakra is where we connect to the heavens. So we talked about the root and the um, I connect, the I am and the I connect, connecting us to the earth. This is how part of how we connect to the heaven. And we want to be connected to the heaven. This is where we truly connect to the divinity. And this is not, you know, this is not a, I don't want us to get mixed up into the idea of some sort of, you know, the spiritual, you know, whatever your spiritual religious beliefs, whatever your faith believes, it's all good. It doesn't, this isn't all about that. This is us being open to get the answers, to see. We are opening up our third eye. So we can see, so we can perceive what it is that we're trying to attain. But what if you're still stuck and you don't know what it is that you want? You don't know what it looks like. Well, I want a Mercedes, but I don't know what kind of Mercedes I want. I don't know what color I want. Well, maybe if you open up your crown chakra, you might get the answers that you're looking for. Maybe if you open up your crown chakra, you'll say, oh, I know I want it to be red. I want the interior to be white. So it, it comes, it comes to you. Whatever your spiritual belief is, it's still important for us all to be connected to the heaven, to be connected to a divinity of whatever that is. We need to be connected to the spirit and to the earth, to the heaven and to the earth. This is an important part of our life, regardless if you honor that or, you know, honor our spiritual life or not, it doesn't matter. But there still needs to be a belief that you want to be connected to something more, something bigger than you, something universal. So once you are that, it actually helps you feel once you're connected into that divinity and you've got the I imagine in, you're connected to something that allows healing literally throughout the rest of your body because you're opening yourself up. Right. So if you know about chakras or, you know, a little bit of Eastern medicine, we're following meridians as well. So it's important 
to be that, to have that connection in order for healing or answers or balance and harmony to kind of surface and to circle within ourselves. We receive guidance from our crown chakra. We receive, you know, an essence of maybe spiritual, uh, an essence of divinity, an essence of, you know, universal, whatever it is, there is something that takes place and an appreciation, a greater appreciation that you have when you're connected and when your crown chakra is open. It's interesting that, you know, what would, what would close up our crown chakra? Trauma, death, grief, you know, when illness, when you feel like, you know, why, when you say why God, that's what's starting to close off your crown chakra. So you could say why God or why whatever. I'm just using this as an example. Um, but when you're questioning something bigger than yourself, you want to know, you want to have an answer. And maybe your crown chakra needs to be open in order to see that. Maybe your third eye needs to be open to perceive exactly what the answer is. So it's more than just, you know, I'm working my crown chakra, I'm putting I imagine in so I can be connected, you know, to something bigger than me. You got to know what you're, you know, what's being bigger than you. So most, sometimes what happens, especially when I'm in, intentionally really working and focusing on specific chakras on myself, you know, it's almost like not opening Pandora's box, but be ready for the shift to happen. Be ready for something new to come in. Be ready to have a different perspective of the life that you're living now and the life that you're going to continue to live because it changes, it shifts you. It definitely, these chakra, these chakra oils, this, this collection has shifted so many people's lives in so many different ways that it's unbelievable. It has brought vitality back in to a person who couldn't even get out of bed. It's brought, you know, this collection has brought back a new focus in people where they were always being run over by people. This collection, you know, it just, it, you know, for a person who's in a transition in their life of, I used to do this and now I'm doing, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Someone that's retiring, someone that's been laid off. I don't, what am I going to do next? If you work these chakras, if you get connected to the heaven and to the earth, if you open yourself up so you can see it. So if you can communicate it to yourself, so you can come from a place of, I want to do something I love. And then what do I think? What do I, you know, what do I, what do I really think? Like, what's my left brain? What's my logical side of my, my brain thinking right now? What is it that I really want to do? Well, I need to make money. I need to do this. Okay. How am I going to do that from my heart? How am I going to feel about it? How am I going to be grounded in this and feel good about moving forward physically? So <clears throat> that's what the chakras are about. It's about taking that next level, that next shift of what do you want to do in your life? What is it that you want to move forward in? Are you in transition? Do you know someone who's in transition? Do you, you know, transition happened for me. I finished massage school and I thought, okay, now do I, what do I do? I started work, you know, and this is before I met Alexandria. It was like, what do I do next? And I got laid off. And then the turmoil starts, right? Then I met Alexandria and I started working my chakras. And then I knew that this was my life. I was being given a gift of unemployment so I could focus on my new career, where my heart and soul resided in the, my new career. So if you are in transition of yourself or of other people, or you know other people who are in transition, this is the this this is the collection. This is the collection. People truly. You want to be able to move forward and to have harmony, balance, and vitality. 
And this is what the, the chakra collection comes up with. This is truly, when you know where the chakras are, and you understand what the chakra, each chakra, each chakra's purpose is, and you don't have a chakra oil, I guarantee you, you've got an oil. You could, there, there's a substitute that you could probably use instead of the chakra oils. So some of the substitutes would be like the success and mentoring blends. Some of the, you know, the could be the, um, oh my God, I just went blank. Um, um, some of the emotional blends. Oh, and the seasons of success. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I see. I was pausing because I can remember what the exact name was. The seasons of success. Those oils can be used in this, you know, if you know where the chakras are, you can use these oils. You can use those in replacement of the chakra oils. So prosperity or prosper. So that oil is actually a great oil for your root chakra. I mean, it's good for every chakra, but it's a great oil for your root chakra and your feet chakra. It grounds you in the earth so you can move into your prosperous life, right? It moves you through that. So uh, what what's the oil of the month? Oh, gentle change. Is that what the oil, is that it this month? Gentle change? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I can't remember. So gentle change. So where is that you need to take a gentle change at? You know, is it in your heart chakra? Do you need to change how your self-love is or how you express love to other people? Is that, a, you know, you could use gentle change on your heart chakra. You could use gentle change on your solar plex, on the, you know, where you put the, I think maybe that's where you need to change. You need to change your point of view. Do you need to change the way that you speak, that you express yourself? See what I'm going, where I'm going? So you can use other oil, other aromatherapy blends because Alexandria blends so everything can be interchangeable. So that way I don't have this blend, but I have this blend and it'll still work. It'll still give you what you need. So you, if you understand where the chakras are and you can Google them, I mean, it will show you where the chakras are. If you need a specific picture or anything like that, you can find that picture and it will tell you where to apply, you know, or where they are. And that's where you can apply the oil. That's where you can apply the oils, you know? So using the chakra oils is going to get into the chakras using the other collections, the season of success, the success and mentoring blends you know, the emotional blends, the, you know, all of those oils can be interchanged with, you know, the chakra collection. So, you know, with the success and mentoring blends, we've got, I, you know, I, I love the success and mentoring blends. There's a great story. Well, and I, we will talk about those blends, I'm sure at some point, the um, success and mentoring blends, there's a, a blend called Be Bold. So, so there is a woman who was very shy and she was not sure how to start. She knew that she wanted to be in this business and she did not know how to start. She didn't know how she was going to talk to people. She didn't know how to approach people, but she put be bold on her solar plexus, the I think where the action takes place every single day. And every single day she was able to talk to somebody about her business. She put the I, the be bold on her throat so she could be bold enough to communicate the importance of her business and why you know she wanted you to be in her business the be bold she wanted to be able to feel like she was walking boldly into a room of a group of people to share about her business so she put be bold on her root and her feet chakra be bold be worthy be capable all these oils, you know, when people say, where do I put them? Where do I put these oils on? And I, you know, I have a little slogan that I created called just slap it on you. It doesn't matter where it goes because it gets into the bloodstream and it's going to do the work. 
So we're actually, you know, essential oils are newer transmitters. We're changing it up here. We're changing it in the brain, but it's also working at the cellular level. We're changing the memory in the cell. We're going in there and we're enriching each of our cells with something more. more. We're changing that memory focus. It's not that the memory is going to be completely gone, but it's not going to overwhelm you anymore. It's not going to take over your life. It's going to shift your life. You'll know when you need to go back to, I need a little bit more be worthy. Or I need a little bit more of, I imagine, or, you know, I am. You'll know it's not always going to be the same oils or the same chakras every single time. Work on different ones at the same time. And then you'll notice a difference. But know that the other collections, if you know where the chakras are located on your body, know that the other collections are truly can be implemented into those spots. It's a great place to put oil. So besides just slapping it on you, if you want to do it intentionally, put it on a chakra, put it on a place on your body that is actually a chakra and you will notice a difference. You will notice that there's so much more that you can truly achieve. You know, we all do different variety of things in our lives. You know, this is just one added thing to support you in your life. You know, this is just one more piece. You know, I, I, I call it a bag of tricks, right? You know, it's just one more trick in your bag that can actually help you, you know, just to move forward. So I can personally say that I, I have always told people that I am a, I am a success. Sometimes it's hard to say, but I am a successful massage therapist. I've been a massage therapist for almost 30 years. And the, these oils make me a better practitioner, not only a better practitioner, but a better person. Because when you start in something in your life, something new, how do you feel that you're going to stay in it? What's the longevity? People jump in they're gung-ho and then they filter off, right? How do you stay in it? How do you, it's not just staying in it, but evolving in it, allowing wherever you are to ele, allow yourself to elevate to a next level, to a next level. And for me, it was learning from Alexandria, becoming her student, allow, you know, her being my mentor and becoming my friend and becoming my family. So it is about the elevation. So I am, you know, my massage business is not just my massage business. It has elevated into different levels. And I solely believe that the reason I can do is because I use these oils and I use these blends. And when I feel fear or when I feel doubt, all I need to do is use an oil and use it over and over and over again until that emotion subsides because it's going to still be in us, right? There's a negative and a positive, right? In a battery, the yin and the yang. So you need both in order to live. It's just about, you know, the control of, of allow, you know, allowing something negative to take over your life. And what we want to do is kind of keep it in balance. You know, a little bit of fear sometimes is a good thing. Like I'm getting close to the edge of this, you know, this mountain, maybe I need to scoot back. There's a little bit of fear. Yeah, because you don't want to jump off the mountain. So a little bit is good, but keeping it in bay, you know, keeping it at bay or arm's distance, right? Just so that way you have that still inside of you. These blends, they do that for you. These blends help you come back from that place of fear or help you come back from that place of doubt, help you come back from that place of lack. This is what happens. This is why Alexandria's blends are completely different than any other. Do you see that? See what? You didn't see that? Okay. I just took it off. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, <laughs> that was really interesting. I look up and there's this thing. 
Okay. Huh. So, um, so those are, this is the collection of the chakra oils. You know, when it, I don't know what time it is. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me get to, let me stop share real quick. Um, it's 1050. You want to do some questions? Yeah, I, I actually do have a question. And if you guys okay. want to ask, um, I think it will let me, if you ask to unmute, I should be able to do that. But um, as far as the chakra collection, um, is there a certain protocol when using all of them? I know the PIP, the PIPs tell us where to put them and I'm, they're not all the way up yet. I know they're working on getting all of those up um, they're just really slammed right now. But is there a certain order? Do you, if you were to sit down with your chakra oils, would you start at the bottom and work your way up during prayer and meditation or? You know, it's always good to start from the bottom up. But I feel that if there's something specific that you are needing or, or you know, you feel that this is what's, you know, kind of, popping up for me, then use that chakra oil. But, you know, if anything, you can start with the feet, move up to, you know, and here's the other thing, more is not always better. So I would not suggest to use every single one of these chakra oils and put them all on. Yeah, don't do that to yourself. The best thing that you can do is do one to three at the most, you know, so intentionally, I will, you know, for some people, it's like three oils works, three blends will work or two blends. It just depends. Oh. You want to make sure that you can handle it. So more is not better. Do not put every single one of these oils on. You know, if you want to just focus on one specific blend at a time, that works. Like I want to, you know, be grounded. Then I'm just going to use the eye connect. You know, people who are a little, you know, you think people are a little flighty or whatever, it's because they're not grounded to the earth. Like they have all these ideas, but they can never take action, right? They're not grounded to the earth. So maybe those people need to, you know, just actually put a little bit more I connect on. And I was thinking as you were talking, um, you know, here we are in October and I'm in Iowa. So I will be having 30 degree below zero Fahrenheit for all the international people um, here in a couple months. And, you know, very shortly, I won't be able to go outside barefoot. And I, I was thinking that's going to be an excellent oil, you know, to, to, to carry me through those months and, and to help. Very me. true. That's just, that's a great idea. That will truly, truly help you. Yeah. Just so that way you can stay grounded. Cause it's, it's hard, you know, people say, well, how do you ground yourself? Well, and most people, you know, will say, go outside and walk in the dirt, walk in the grass. And, you know, you can't do that always when it's snowing. So, yeah, the eye connect will definitely help keep you connected to the earth. Awesome. Does anyone else have any questions? I know we have a couple uh, chakra studiers, practitioners on the call. So thank you very much. I hope you loved that and can see the value of this collection in uh, your own practice. I'm going to pop back over while you guys are thinking of questions, if you have some, um, and let you see the screen for our next class. I'm super excited. So, uh, well, this one's beforehand. So there is an oil for that. That's the full uh, essential oil collection from Godasana for the chakras and how brilliant and intuitive for Alexander to put that together for us and in our network. Next month, oop, I need a better picture for that. Uh, next month is the Women of the Bible Essential Oil Collection. If you have not looked at this, it is extremely powerful. There's lots of information on the product information pages. And I can't wait to um, see what and how uh, Veronica teaches on this. I'm super excited. So it doesn't look like we have any hands raised or any other questions. Thank you all for hopping on today. We will see you November 4th with the Women of the Bible Collection. Have a great day and I'll post a recording shortly. Bye-bye.